Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump. Welcome to this two-part tutorial on creating explosions with fume effects and Maya fluids. As far as I've seen, nobody's ever done a tutorial showing the exact same process for both of these two softwares together. And I believe they're both great, and each one has benefits that the other doesn't. So we're gonna create an explosion using the same base and then see what each one can do with it. So to get started, I'm going to use a particle emitter to create the source for the explosion. And I'm going to make it a volume emitter. And the reason I want to use a volume emitter is just because it'll give me a little bit of a bigger area for the explosion to start, so it doesn't start from an infinitesimally small point. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the particles right away. I know that we're going to have a very short burst of particles, so by starting it off with a high number, I already know that I should have enough to get started. And the direction, I'm gonna to want to go in the Y direction, so they'll burst up. Let me give them a little bit of speed randomization. And I'm gonna change my volume shape here to a sphere. And now if I look at that in the orthographic view, I'm going to come up to my scale and I'm going to give the y-axis a 50% scale, just squish it down a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring it up a couple of units, maybe 1.5. There we go. I just don't want it to be directly on the ground. I want to be able to have some interaction with the ground by forcing it out. So coming back down, away from center, let's go ahead and turn that up. And along axis, we'll turn that up. If we look closely here, we can see a little arrow pointing out from the sphere. And that's the direction our particles are going to travel. So let's see, is there anything else I want to change right now? I don't think so. But I'm going to come over to my outliner I'm going to go to my particle shape, and instead of live forever, I'm going to want to use a random range. And this is going to be a very short lifespan, maybe a quarter of a second and a quarter of a second randomization. And let's go ahead and increase our frame numbers to 200. That should give us plenty of time to really see what this explosion is going to do. And let's go ahead and hit play. We have a nice big burst of particles. There's a, there's a good amount of them, but I think I'm going to need just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and go up to 5,000. And then I'm going to come over here to the fifth frame, set a key at 5,000, move to the sixth frame, and turn them off. Just so we get that nice burst. And you know what? I'm going to turn them up just a little bit more. Let's go 7,500. I just want there to be enough detail in the particles. And that's not bad. We could start here. But since this is the genesis of the explosion, I think we want to give it a slightly more interesting look. So with my particles selected, I'm going to come over to the fields and I'm going to add a turbulence field. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the attenuation. The attenuation is the drop-off for the field's effect, and I don't want any drop-off. I want it to constantly be affecting the particles. And I'm going to bring the magnitude up. Let's try 100. And let's see what that gets us. What we want to do is just have a more interesting shape started. So instead of a big round puff ball, yeah, there we go. We're starting to see that the turbulence field is pushing the particles into different directions. We're getting a much more unique and interesting shape here. And that is going to be important. Otherwise, our explosion would just be a big round puffball explosion. And while there are uses for that, I want to do something a little more unique and a little more interesting. So let's try bringing up our frequency just a little bit. I just want to see if I can get an different kind of shape. That's looking pretty good. So we know 2 looks really nice. Let's go ahead and jump it up to a high number here just to see what it does.
And at that point, it looks like the frequency is so high, it's almost like not having the turbulence on. The particles are moving in a turbulent way. We've lost the interesting shape that we gained. So let's go back to two and I'll just keep it there. All right, so now we have our particles and I think they're definitely very interesting looking and I think we're gonna get a nice explosion out of them. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna save my particles as the explosion base. And this is the same file I will use for both the Maya fluids and the fume effects fluids. So which one are we gonna do first? Maya fluids or fume effects? And just to be fair, we'll leave this completely up to chance and I'll flip a coin. With heads being Maya fluids and tails being fume effects. So fume effects it is, that's the one we're gonna do. So we'll save our file name as the explosion fume effects and we'll get started. So since we already have our particles, let's go ahead and highlight them. We'll come over to our fume effects menu and we're gonna create a source from our particles. So I'll click on that and let's go ahead and change our icon size down to something smaller so it's not distracting and let's go ahead and create our fume effects volume all right now we're going to check inside the relationship manager and make sure our particle source is connected to the fume effects we could also hook up our turbulence field and we may do that later but for right now we'll just start here and the first thing I'm going to want to do is turn down the spacing and that's just to give us a little better resolution right off the bat let's see our height and width length they're all good the boundless I'm gonna go ahead and say that the positive Y is open and both of my X's and both of my Z's that way, just in case this explosion gets a lot larger than what our original volume is, fume effects can grow with it. So I'm gonna come down, our output frame is set to 200, which is good. And our, let's change our default path. Everything shouldn't be going there. I want this to go out to my cache drive and I'm gonna create a new folder for fume effects. And I'm gonna create explosion, fume effects 01. All right, so now we've got that set up. Let's check our playback, zero to 200, that's correct. That's what we want. I'm going to go ahead and click always display so that way if I click off of my fume effects volume it doesn't disappear. Right now the display type is set to points which is just fine and we may come back here and use this reduce in a little bit and that's just to help ease the strain off the viewport. If our viewport seems like it's lagging because of the amount of voxels it's showing, we can come in here, reduce it, and get a faster preview. Let's see, delay com display components is just fine. We don't need to do any slicing, so let's head down to the simulation tab. And here, usually, I don't change too much, but I'm going to turn down the maximum iterations for now. And that's just to keep the simulation moving fast. If we find out that the simulation is performing in ways that we don't expect, we might want to come back and turn this up. But initially, I'll go ahead and turn that down. And I'm going to come in and change my time scale to 1.5. Since this is an explosion, we're going to want it to move a little fast. And we may come back and keyframe that guy later, but for now, we're OK. Now, the evection and the vorticity, we're gonna come back and play with these numbers a lot in a little bit. 
But for now, again, I just want to kind of start getting in some rough numbers. And these are kind of the settings I'll do almost every time I start Fume Effects. So let's go ahead. I'm going to want a smaller scale noise. I like the frames to be at 12, so that way there's just a slightly longer animation loop on the noise. And I'm going to turn the detail up to its maximum. And blocking sides, I'm going to set that to negative Y. That means that there is now an infinite plane on this ground that the fluid can interact with. And it will respect that boundary and not go below it. So if I go to my fuel, I definitely want to be simulating fuel. I'm going to take my ignition temperature and drop it a little lower. I'm going to want to take my burn rate and let's try 15. Let's see how it looks when it burns pretty fast. Burn rate variation, let's turn that all the way up. Let's take the heat production and turn that up. We want this to be a very hot explosion. And the expansion, we're definitely going to want to turn up. So let's start with five for the moment. And we'll turn on fire, create smoke, and we'll put in a density of about five. Again, all these numbers are just rough right now. These are based on experience that I've had with fume effects and my own intuition with it. None of these are really set in stone. Let's see, our diffusion strength, let's go ahead and double that. I like the smoke to burn off a little faster. Temperature, that's all fine. Color is fine. Velocity is fine. Extra detail. I'm going to go ahead and simulate for wavelet turbulence. Again, this may not be something we end up needing, but it's definitely good to have simulated for it. We're not dealing with post processing at the moment. And if we come down to our render settings, I'm just going to quickly add a little bit of a ramp here. So it starts very bright, goes to a nice orange, and then over to a darker red. And we'll come back and play with that more as well as the opacity. Let's change our smoke color to be something a little darker. Now we get more of a interesting look for the smoke. And I think that's a good starting point. But before I go, I want to come into my particle source and make some settings changes here. So for right now, I'm going to say show them in the viewport. And right now we're seeing a bunch of little spheres. Each one of these spheres is the radius of influence of our fume effects particles. So in the radius right now, they look a little bit big to me. So I want to bring them down and I want them to overlap, but I don't want them to be crazy overlapping. And I'm going to come down to my velocity multiplier. And this is a great little addition that I do wish Maya Fluids has as well. And this gives me the ability to come in and make my particles go even faster. Our fuel amount is just fine, temperature is just fine, smoke. Everything else I think is going to be okay. So let's go ahead and take a quick simulation and see where we are. So I'll come over to Fume Effects. I will open up my preview window and I'm going to go ahead and simulate. All right, so. We had a very big fireball, but it didn't really have much in the way of detail. And that is something that we'll fix with our spacing. Let's go ahead and bring it down to 0.3 for now. Next thing is that it did burn off way too fast for me. So I'm going to come down to my fuel and I'm going to change the burn rate back to 30, bring it back to its default. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce my expansion just a touch. And let's go ahead and see where that gets us. Oh, I made that critical mistake again of <laughs> confusing my burn rate. And 
I turned it up when I really wanted to go the other way with it. So I'm going to drop it down to five. That should make it go and burn slower. This is something that I do in my head a lot. Just one of those things you just have to keep reminding yourself of. So let's go ahead and turn down our smoke density while we're at it. That was looking a little thick. Here we go. Now we're starting to get something a little more interesting. But because we've dropped our expansion, we've also lost a lot of the volume. So we're getting closer, but not quite there yet. So I'm going to turn my smoke up a little bit more and I'm going to bring my expansion back up. And you see that nice, more interesting shape we're getting? That's because we have those particles with the turbulence that are driving the explosion. And it's just creating a really nice, interesting shape to start with. All right, not bad, but we've lost too much smoke density at this point. So I'm going to try bumping that guy up and I'm going to actually bump up my expansion a little bit more. And that's probably a little too much on the expansion, but we are getting a really nice little fireball there. So I don't want to turn it down too much. I can break up some of this shape either by hooking it up to the turbulence field or by the turbulence within fume effects itself. All right, let's go ahead. Let's try a six for the expansion and let's try 20 on the smoke density. And we'll go ahead and simulate again. Okay, that's getting pretty good. I'm starting to like this little guy. Doesn't have enough smoke being produced from it yet, but I like the shape. That is for sure. It's definitely an interesting shape, and that's a lot of fun. So I'm going to come down, and now I'm going to come back up to that reduce. Not so much because I'm having a hard time keeping up with the preview, but more for the fact that I'd rather not spend the memory on the preview. I'd rather push it into the simulation. So let's come over to our particle source. And I'm going to increase the smoke amount. Just bring that guy up. And then I'll come back here. And make sure that my dissipation probably why it's, it's just burning out too fast. All right, let's go ahead and bring that all the way back down just burning it off so fast that we're really just not seeing any smoke. And we're getting a little bit more there, but I'd still like to see even more. So I'm gonna bring this down to point one and simulate it again. And that's a little better, but it's still just not what I'm looking for. I'd like a bit more smoke to kind of fill out that explosion. So I'm gonna bump that number up to 40. And we'll try it again.
All right, getting closer, getting closer. I'm gonna go ahead and crank that number way up. And not necessarily because I think it needs to be that high, but sometimes when you're simulating, it is worth your time to just go ahead and crank a number up, see where that gets you, just to see what you're dealing with. And that's starting to actually become more of the look that I want. I want more of that smoke mixing in. All right, I'm gonna stop it here. And I don't like some of this banding. Let me make sure my quality's up high enough. And I'm gonna turn on shadows. I'm gonna turn on my multiple scattering. So we're gonna come down to the render settings. And we're gonna take a look at our explosions opacity channel. I'm gonna kind of give it more of this mountainy kind of look. And I'm gonna bump up my smoke's opacity a little bit. Turn on its cast and receive shadows. There we go, now it's starting to look much more interesting. color is okay. Bring this down a little bit. There we go. Just have a nice even fall off so we can see a little more of that fire through the smoke. And then I'm going to come down to my multiple scattering and I'm going to want to turn up the fall off a little bit. Right now we get a lot of illumination, but it's making the smoke look more like some weird fire. So what I want to do is just kind of bring this up to a place where I feel like the smoke is getting illuminated by the fire, but not completely dominated by it. And it seems like 10 is a pretty good number there. Okay, so we're starting to really get a nice explosion here. So let's talk about how we can take this to the next level. And the first thing I think I'm going to do is come down to the fifth frame here and I'm going to take my turbulent setting and I'm going to crank this way up in the beginning. I'm going to set a key and then over about five frames I'm going to turn this back to the number we had it at. Or maybe just a little bit higher. I'd like to see a little more movement. So we'll go ahead and set that. And I think what we'll do is come over to our time scale and let's go ahead and put that at about two for the beginning. And around frame 15, we'll bring that back to normal. We just want this to be big and violent in the beginning and then just kind of relax and act naturally as it burns. There we go. Now we're starting to get much more breakup in that shape. It's no longer as round as it used to be. Definitely getting something much more interesting, much more fun. All right, I'm gonna pull back here a little bit. And what I want to do is go ahead and stop the simulation. As this is starting to look pretty interesting to me. And what I'm going to want to do is take a preview. And what I want to check is how the animation speed is really looking. You know, do we have something that Do we have something that's going to look good when it's played in real time? Each of these simulation steps looks nice, but we want to make sure the timing is correct as well. So we'll go ahead and make our preview. And 
And yeah, as far as the speed and the movement, I think that's looking really interesting. I think when we get to compositing, we're going to definitely want to do a little time ramping on the beginning. Because even though we've done all this speed up work, it just doesn't feel as explosive as it could. But again, that's something that we'll deal with in the composite. Everything else is starting to look really nice. I'm really happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. And since we're at frame 55 and the explosion is starting to fade out, I don't really see a need for this tutorial to do any more than 100 frames. I'll just save on a little disk space, save on simulation time, save on render time. All right, so I'm going to drop everything down to 100. And we'll make a mental note that next week when we do the Maya Fluids version, that will keep it at 100 there as well. So I want these to be as much of an A-B test as we really can get. So you can really see the differences in the looks and the abilities of each of these fluid simulation softwares. Okay, so let's come down and play with our ramp a little more. What I want to do is kind of like dealing with fire. I just want to come in and start creating a more interesting look here. I want each of these to just kind of have a little something more to it so it's just not straight color all the time. That's a little too dark there. There we go. It's just something a little more interesting in the ramp. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to turn my spacing down to two. That should give us a pretty interesting and a decent resolution simulation. So let's go ahead and start simulating and see what we get. And already I'm starting to see a lot nicer coloring in the fire. I'm definitely seeing the difference in the resolution. Just a lot more detail now. And I'm going to let this play out and then we'll come back as soon as the simulation finishes. Okay, so I've let it simulate for a bit and we can definitely see we've got a really nice almost ready for render here and this you could render this one just as it is but remember those two settings I said we'd come back to the advection stride and the vorticity well those are going to influence a lot of how this looks right now there's nothing wrong with this but this may not be the exact look that you're looking for now, a great reference for the Avection Stride and the Vorticity are found here on Vimeo. This guy Jeff Lim has done an amazing job of showing what the different settings are and kind of what you're going to get produced by changing them. Starting with your Vorticity as zero and then bringing up the Advection Stride. And you can just see here the different numbers plugged in. And if we play it through, you'll definitely see a lot of difference here. Now, since ours are at 0.5.5 right now, this is about where we are. And if we look at our simulation, get these guys a little more side by side, you'll see that's a pretty accurate representation. It's not overly smooth, but it's not overly puffy as well. Well, you may want a much more you may want a much more turbulent effect on your fluids so let's go ahead take our advection stride bring that up to 1 and the vorticity up to 1 then we're going to come back and re-simulate and see what the difference is Okay, so here we are at frame 40, 
And just the change to those two have completely altered the perceived scale of this explosion, where the other one had this much smoother smoke and much smoother detail on it, making it feel like a smaller fireball. This new simulation, even though nothing else has changed, has completely changed how big we perceive it because of the small fine detail, the small curls of smoke, all these little wisps, that makes it seem like this is a much larger explosion than the one we originally did. Each of those are completely valid. You just have to decide what you need to do with it. Are you trying to do a small fireball? Are you trying to do a large fireball? Let's go ahead and drop these guys back down to zero. And before we do that, re-simulate, I'm gonna take a quick render here so that we can AB these later. And we'll just see what the full difference is. Now, according to what Jeff has in his video, what we should get is a result much more like this. And let's see what that does in changing, oops, mental ray. Sorry, my renderer was set to Maya software, not mental ray, and Fume Effects needs mental ray to render. So we'll take this preview, we're going to resim with these very low numbers, and we're going to see what the difference is in the perceived scale and the look of this explosion. Okay, we lost all of our nice beautiful look there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly come in, I'm going to create a couple lights, and I'm just going to back here and just give it a little something that will help illuminate the smoke and I'll duplicate that guy bring him back down to the other side and I'll turn down his brightness now if we come back here I'll make sure we're in the direction of our two lights, which we want to be on this side. Here we go. That should give us some nice illumination. Let's come back to Fume. Oh, now I've done it. I've angered Fume. There we go, much brighter. Um, but we've lost a little bit of the nice shadow quality. Come back here and just bring this up a little more. I just want to make sure. Oops. And we're not losing all of our shadows. And I think what we need to do is come back. Remember when we lowered our fires, or I'm sorry, when we lowered our smoke's opacity, we may have gone a little far with it. So let's come and boost this guy back up. Just a touch, there we go. Now we're starting to see more of that nice shadowy look in there. So let's save the file and redo our render. You know what I did not do? And this is an important mistake I've made. I'm going to stop my render. I'm going to come over to my relationship manager and I want to make sure I've added my lights. Um, otherwise Fume is not using them. So now if I do my render I should definitely get a much stronger lit look. All right, our render's done, and we definitely are getting that nice lit look. Those lights are now completely active within the scene. And again, we get to see all this nice small detail, these nice small swirls, making this fireball look very big. So let's go ahead, we'll save that guy off, and we'll reset our simulation here with the, yep, our vorticity and our Infection Strider low, and save the file, and let's go ahead and give it another simulation and see what the difference is. 
Okay, so we're at about frame nine right now, and something interesting has happened that I think is definitely worth showing. When I ran the first 40 frames of the last simulation, the estimated time to finish it was at about 40, 50 minutes. And right now, at frame nine, my estimated simulation time is 13 hours, 54 minutes. And the only change I've made to this point is the changes to the advection stride and the vorticity. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this guy just as soon as I can. And I'm gonna raise these numbers back up just a little bit, just because that simulation time is way too long. It's obviously something we're not gonna be able to use. Even if we really wanted that look, the amount of simulation time is prohibitive. So let's go ahead. We've got much lower numbers than we had before. We should still see a very big difference in the look of our fluid. And here we go again with a nice fast simulation. You know, 22 minutes and we're already at frame 13. So let's just go ahead and let this guy get out to frame 40, and then we'll come back and take a look at the differences of the two explosions. Okay, so here we are at frame 40, and you can tell just by quickly looking at it, this is a very different looking explosion than the last render. Let's go ahead and take that quick render again so we can A-B it with the one where the advection and vorticity were both set to one. Here, they're both set to 0.2. All right, so our render is done. Let's go ahead and bring back in Jeff Lim's reference. And I think immediately you're gonna see that the look is completely different between these two explosions. So here we are with everything at point two, which if we bring up Jeff's reference, everything at about point two is right here. And I think that's a pretty good approximation. We have a little bit of swirling, a more long and strandy feeling volume of smoke. Whereas we come back to the one where everything was at, but if we come back to this one where our infection and vorticity were both set to one. We just have a lot more detail here and a lot more small detail breaking up those long strides. So again, everything point two, everything at one, no other changes to the explosion whatsoever. The exact same thing. These two settings have more to do with the final look of your explosion than almost anything else. I prefer this one here to this explosion, but depending on what the circumstances you're trying to create, you may feel that this is more appropriate for your needs. The more you crank up your vorticity, the more small scale puffy noise you'll have in your smoke. The more you crank up your evection stride, the more it's gonna break up the elongated feeling of your smoke. And by mixing and matching the two, you can get a whole host and range of looks. All right. So I prefer this one here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna crank back up my settings. We're gonna do another simulation and then we'll come back, take a look, make sure that everything's ready before we go to render. All right, so here we are at frame 60 and let's go ahead and bring this guy back down. Now here's that little bit of the viewport is struggling a little bit. So if I wanna come up, and reduce my viewport a little bit so it doesn't struggle quite so much. That would be a good thing. But I can see here that we've just got an amazingly nice explosion happening here. So let's go ahead and talk about rendering. So I'm gonna come down here to my render settings and I'm just gonna to wanna to fine tune this a little bit. 
I'm gonna just play with a little bit of my settings here just to get a little more of the look I'm going for. Let's go ahead and bring that back down, that back down a bit, just to soften up what's happening here, because we're getting really hard edges, and that didn't look great. There we go, that's much nicer. Definitely has a much softer, more integrated look there. Now we've still got a little bit here, so let's go ahead and bring this down just a little more. Oops. Just a little more. There we go, soften that right up. And I think we've definitely got something that we can use. Let's go ahead, bring down our fall off just a little more, maybe back down to about six. I don't want to lose all of my, all of the influence of the fire on the smoke. Let's come back, take a look at some of these earlier frames. And I think here, let's go ahead and bring the brightness down just a little bit, just so we don't blow out this center too much. That's looking pretty good. And I am pretty darn happy with this. I'm gonna come back here to frame 40 again. Get this line to back up. And I'm gonna take one more render using the camera. Okay, so the render's looking really nice. We've got a lot of nice interaction with the lighting from the fire into the smoke. We've got a lot of nice detail. I'm very happy with this. And I think this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something that you can use in your work. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up on either Twitter or Facebook or in the comments. Thanks for watching, go and create.